More than 48,000 acres of wildfires. 2,500 sheep burned alive. Many people blame lightning, but the real spark came from forgotten straw bales left behind after harvest. Yes, it's straw, the stuff that seems almost useless, yet it can bring disaster to humans. But in a world that's desperate for water, the story changes. One quarter of the world's farmland is suffering from drought. Things are even worse in Australia, one of the three countries experiencing the fastest climate change on Earth, with temperatures rising by 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit in just 50 years. But instead of burning straw, they chose to bury it in the ground. What does this mean? Why bury trash in the heart of the desert? Don't jump to conclusions. The story ahead might surprise you even more. Australia is the second driest continent on Earth after Antarctica. The land is dry, rocky, cracked, and groundwater is so deep that wells can't reach it. Over 80% of the country gets less than 24 inches of rain each year. And some places get only 3 inches, less than the Sahara Desert. 1 million hectares of Australian farmland have died from salt damage and another 4 million hectares are on the brink. Yet Australia is still among the top five wheat exporters in the world, competing directly with the United States, Russia, Canada, and China. That's right, a crop that needs lots of water is grown right in the desert. Of course, they have to spend millions of dollars per acre, treating soil with lime, drilling wells, pumping groundwater, buying deep plows, and pricey fertilizers. The good news is, the 2023 to 2024 harvest brought in over 28 million tons of wheat for Australia, enough to feed hundreds of millions of people and export all over the world. But the bad news is, after the joy of harvest comes the golden nightmare, mountains of straw. For every two pounds of wheat grain, there are two pounds of dry straw left behind. That means in just one season, Australia produces over 28 million tons of straw, enough to cover the entire city of Sydney with a layer nearly 20 inches thick. But what is straw, really? Straw is the stalk left after harvesting wheat, barley, or rice. It's mostly made of cellulose, lignin, and hemicellulose, three compounds that are tough to break down but great at holding water and carbon. However, in traditional farming, straw has almost no economic value. It's dry, light, bulky, and hard to transport. So most farmers just burn it right in the field to clear the way for the next crop. At first, many people tried to use straw as animal feed, but how much can cows and sheep really eat? Huge farms in Western Australia quickly became overwhelmed. Storage barns packed full. So the straw was left out in the fields, baking in the sun, and blowing in the wind. And this happened more often than you'd think. With Australia's hot, dry climate, in 2024, the Bayandine Fire burned over 48,000 acres, destroying homes, grain silos, and thousands of livestock. In 2006, the Pulitop Fire swept through more than 22,000 acres, killing over 2,500 sheep in just a few hours. Many experts believe those fires started from piles of straw that caught fire on their own. But even when it's not burning, straw is still toxic. When burned, each ton of straw releases over 1.3 tons of carbon dioxide, along with 128 pounds of carbon monoxide, fine dust, nitrogen oxides, and sulfur oxides, enough to cloud the rural sky. People complain about coughing, trouble breathing, stinging eyes, and traffic gets disrupted by thick smoke. And that's not all. Underground, damp, rotting straw becomes a five-star hotel for fungi, bacteria, and pests. For years, Australians tried everything to get rid of the mountain of straw, grinding it into fertilizer, pressing it into fuel pellets, even burying it but every effort was expensive and mostly useless. There was just too much straw, the land was too dry, and no one wanted to deal with what was seen as trash. That is, until a group of researchers in South Australia asked a simple but bold question. If burning straw harms the soil, why not let it feed the soil? 
and they actually did it. The first experiment took place in the dry southern lands of Australia, where the soil is called hydrophobic soil. Even though their idea was bold, the researchers didn't expect much. They just wanted to see what would happen. They covered the ground with a layer of straw a few centimeters thick. When the rare early season rain fell, the water didn't run off. It stopped, soaked through the straw, and stayed put. Three weeks later, the once cracked earth was covered in a thin green layer. Earthworms appeared, and under the microscope, millions of microbes were multiplying. That land came back to life. Pretty amazing, right? Here's the science in simple terms. Australian desert soil has a hydrophobic layer that repels water, so rain can't soak in. Straw, when wet, can hold twice its weight in water, then slowly releases it back into the soil, breaking through that water-repellent layer. Experiments in China showed soil moisture increased by 7 to 22 percent, water use efficiency improved by 24 to 33 percent, and in Australia, wheat yields rose by 8.7 percent, even in the driest regions. See? Just a layer of straw can change the fate of a whole field, but it doesn't stop at holding water. The straw blanket also cuts evaporation by 40%, captures dew at night, and cools the soil like putting a mini air conditioner right on the ground. During the day, it blocks the burning sun, and at night, it pulls moisture from the air. Water doesn't run off anymore. It stays right where life needs it. After a few months, the real magic begins. The once dry golden straw has turned into a biological factory working quietly underground. Straw keeps the soil moist, lowers the temperature, then slowly decomposes, releasing nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the three key nutrients for all life, plus calcium, magnesium, iron, zinc, and dozens of other micronutrients. The useless cellulose is eaten up by microbes, leaving behind rich, black organic matter. In experiments in South Australia, after just 90 days, the soil's organic content increased by 12%. Earthworm numbers tripled, and water absorption improved by 40% compared to fields without straw cover. Under the microscope, the soil looks alive like a tiny planet. Fungi, bacteria, earthworms, termites, and ants all work together to break down straw, release nutrients, and pump air deep into the soil. Every inch of soil becomes a natural laboratory where carbon, water, and life are constantly exchanged. And strangely enough, even farmers' worst enemy, weeds, are defeated. A straw blanket, a few inches thick blocks sunlight from reaching the soil so weed seeds can't sprout. The result? Healthier crops, fewer pests, and up to 70% less herbicide and pesticide use. Truly clean fields, free from chemicals and weeds, so clean you can almost hear the earth breathing. But Australia isn't the only place discovering the magic of straw. In China, they've gone even further, burying straw 12 to 16 inches deep under special sand in Ningxia and Gansu, where deserts are swallowing up villages. When buried deep, straw decomposes 25% faster, boosts soil organic carbon, improves moisture, and cuts wind erosion by up to 60%. In the burning desert, that straw acts like a life network, holding sand, holding water, and holding on to hope for people. And China didn't stop there. They combined agricultural film, windbreak trees, and a checkerboard pattern of straw to create a multi-layered ecosystem against desertification. This model helped shrink the Kubuki Desert by over 1,900 square miles in 20 years, a miracle recognized by the United Nations as the world's green miracle. If Australia combined these techniques, deep straw burial, straw cover, and windbreak planting, the results for soil moisture and land recovery could double. And maybe for the first time in history, two countries half a world apart would share the same secret using their own waste to save the planet. We used to think straw was just something to burn, agricultural waste with little value. 
but the truth is we've never fully unlocked its potential. In Europe, a project called Booty Next, funded by tens of millions of euros from the European Union, is proving the opposite. Straw can power cars. That's right, they figured out how to turn every dry straw fiber into biobutanol, a biofuel that can be used directly in gasoline or diesel engines without any modifications. It sounds like science fiction, but this is real technology already being rolled out in Spain, France, and Germany. The process is like a magic transformation. Straw is shredded, steamed with dilute acid to break down the cellulose, like unlocking the hidden sugars inside the stalk. Then, special enzymes are added to split cellulose and hemicellulose into simple sugars. When the mix is ready, Clostridium acetobutylicum bacteria, the same kind used in World War I to make industrial solvents, are added. They eat the sugars and produce an ABE mix, acetone, butanol, and ethanol. Finally, butanol is distilled and purified, becoming a biofuel that can be blended at 16% with gasoline or 40% with diesel. Pilot tests in Spain now process 15 pounds of straw per hour, producing 26 gallons of fermented liquid. Calculations show that just one ton of straw can power a car for over 930 miles. And the miracle is, engines run smoothly and cleanly with no need for tuning, and emissions drop by 60% compared to fossil fuels. Butanol is also 80% less volatile, cutting toxic fumes at gas stations. A big plus for urban environments. But the real challenge is ahead, scaling up, cutting costs, and bringing this to remote, dry places like Australia. Still, just imagine, every bale of straw lying in the field today could be the fuel of the future, enough to power a cleaner world. Doesn't that excite you? If in Europe, straw is turned into fuel for cars on the highway, in the United States, people have turned straw into building material. Sounds like a joke, but it's actually happening in Buffalo, New York, in a project funded by RPE, a division of the U.S. Department of Energy, since 2022. The goal is to find a way to 3D print insulation material from recycled wheat straw. The process starts by chemically treating the straw, separating cellulose and lignin, then bonding them together with hydrogen bonds to create a super strong bio glue. From there, the team developed a 3D printing ink from straw that can be extruded through a high-speed slot die nozzle. Unlike regular 3D printers that handle only a few grams at a time, this nozzle can print multiple streams of material at once, boosting print speed by 10 times and ensuring even coverage across the surface. The results are impressive. The final product is lightweight, insulates well, is highly compressive, and is up to 30% more fire resistant than organic cotton insulation. The ignition temperature of the 3D printed straw board is over 536 degrees Fahrenheit, much higher than most common insulation materials. And what excites engineers most is that everything is natural, renewable, and free from toxic chemicals. This project isn't just about technology. It opens up a new vision for the circular life of biomass. Straw that was once burned now comes back to protect people from heat, cold, and carbon emissions. Now the Buffalo team is looking for industrial partners to scale up commercially. If successful, the United States could recycle tens of millions of tons of straw each year into green building materials, cutting millions of tons of carbon dioxide emissions. Looking back at the journey from scorched fields to homes printed from straw, do you think nature always has answers? If only we listen? What was once considered waste is now becoming the foundation for humanity's green future. Nothing is truly useless. There are only things we haven't yet learned to value and use the right way. If you believe there are still simple but great solutions like this in the world, leave a comment below, share your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel to discover more amazing stories about our planet.